This summer, we are already seeing that blue-green algae on Lake Erie. They're called algal blooms, and it's bacteria that can make people and pets sick when you come in contact with it. And it's not just on Lake Erie. Reports of algal blooms in Michigan lakes are now on the rise as we take a live look, the boaters out there right now. Uh, just recently, I talked with Susan Peters from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services all about it. Joining me now is Susan Peters. She is a waterborne disease epidemiologist with the Michigan Depart Department of Health and Human Services. Susan, thanks so much for being with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, at the time of year when we want to spend time in the water and on beaches, um, we really want to make sure that the water quality is okay. And something that a lot of people are talking about are algal blooms. And we've heard of a larger bloom in the Lake Erie area, but there are also several small ones in lakes in Michigan. What do we need to know? And can you kind of explain it to us what we should be looking for? Certainly. Yeah. When people go out to a lake, a river, really any water, they should always take the opportunity to look at their surroundings and make sure the water looks clear, that it doesn't appear discolored, or that there may be anything that could be consistent with a potentially harmful algal bloom. Um, and those can look like scums or spilled paint along the surface of the water. Um, sometimes it can look kind of like streaks of color, usually a green or a kind of a yellow green in the water. Um, and really just try to stay in areas that are clear. And um, unfortunately, while we're most familiar with Lake Erie having um, a harmful algal bloom every year, we do have other lakes across the state and inland lakes that are affected each year. Yeah, we're talking about the cyanobacteria that causes that algal bloom, but people may not understand exactly then why does it, is it happen? Is it a phosphorus runoff? Um, each water body that has a cyanobacterial or blue-green algae bloom, as they're um, sometimes referred to, it is a unique situation in each particular lake. Um, certainly, we know that increased nutrient runoff, like nitrogen and phosphorus, can potentially lead to a bloom. Um, also, increased water temperatures and decreased mixing in a water body. So if the water is stagnant, those are all things that can potentially lead to a bloom, but kind of each situation is different. So of course, not all blue and green algae is, is bad for us, but if we do encounter, you know, an algae bloom in the lakes that we're in, what kind of impact could it have on humans? And then looking at also our pets who are in the water a lot. Yeah, definitely. Most people and pets who do encounter blue-green algae are going to be perfectly fine. But just because there is always a chance of illness related to coming into contact with that algae, we do recommend people and pets avoid it. So um, certainly things that people can look out for if they think they might be sick from exposure to that algae, um, it can present as a respiratory illness. So, you know, coughing, sneezing, kind of itchy, watery eyes. It can uh, cause our asthma symptoms to be worse, um, but it can also cause gastrointestinal symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea. Um, it can cause headaches. And then there are unfortunately some um, toxins that are sometimes produced by those blooms that can even cause neurologic symptoms like dizziness and especially for our animal friends, um, trouble walking. And um, even unfortunately we have had dog dust in the past related to these blooms. So um, it makes it a bit difficult because there's not one particular sign of illness you can look for. Um, but definitely, again, because of all those potential um, illnesses that could happen, again, that's why we recommend staying away from any blooms that you might see. Is there any kind of tracking system by the state that shows what bodies of water might have these blooms? Yes. So the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, in partnership with the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, we produce a weekly harmful algal bloom map, and that's available online. You can just go to michigan.gov slash maps, 
and we update that every week with any confirmed reports of HABs that we receive from across the state, as well as any information that we have about any laboratory testing that was done at those sites. Yeah, and HAB stands for a harmful algal bloom. And again, to be able to have that kind of information and for people to take a look at. Again, explain for us, Susan, you know, just using the naked eye, what we should be looking for. Yeah, so HABs in general, for the most part, will have a greenish, uh, appearance. They can kind of look like spilled paint. Um, we often refer to it as a pea soup appearance. You know, it just really looks like a coating across the, the top of the lake on the surface. Um, but sometimes it's not so much of a soupy appearance. They can kind of form clumps or be more streaky. Um, and then in some situations, it's not necessarily a green color. It can turn a bit of a turquoise color or even a little bit white when the bloom is dying. Um, and some blooms look a bit more yellowish um, or even other colors as well. So um, what we do recommend is that if people see something in the water and they're not sure what it is, you can always take a picture and you can send that to people at Eagle, the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy um, and they have an email address. It's called algaebloom at michigan.gov, and they can help you identify what you saw. All right, so if you want to see the MDHSS algal bloom maps, at clickondetroit.com. This is what they look at, and so you can see the areas where algal blooms have been reported and confirmed in the state of Michigan. You get some more information on sending pictures to the state. If you think you see it, just head to clickondetroit.com. We have a lot more info for you there.